All right, Terps, I'm back to finish up season two of Survivor Maryland, the Maryland Outback with the post-merge. This post-merge has a lot of fun stuff. The all-time blind side uh, that I spoke about in the pre-merge is here. Uh, it's happening in this presentation. I am very excited to talk about it because it, it it's mind-blowing. Uh, it's wild. A lot of moving parts to get there, but we'll get there and... Even aside from that, this is a great post range, and I'm excited to talk about it. Before we jump in, here are the dateable players, as, uh, you know, the Survivor community likes to say. The folks that made the merge, we have Chris LeCompte, Nicole Senti, Zandria Chandler, Connor, Ryan, Nicole Locke, whose head is being blocked a little bit, that's okay, Chris Thomas, Phil, and Steve Sleesman. Um talked about them on the previous presentation so hopefully you have an idea of who's working with who but if not you know you'll, you'll catch up i'm sure it'll be fine it'll all you know bounce around anyways episode eight the tribes have merged there's like a nice little thing of uh after the crazy double tribal steve reads off a note spells out like merge cake and I think Senti like doesn't understand that <laughs> hear the word merge and that's funny and they celebrate we have um Chris Thompson and Ryan talking about wanting to be uh tight you know Waka and Connor strong till the end Chris and Phil are nervous that Waka will turn on them after um LeCompte and Steve get taken out they know they're big threats after those two Ryan has a confession about how many duos there are there are a ton. There's Chris and Steve, the other Chris and Phil, Ryan and Siona, Chandler and Senti are kind of a pair, um, Chandler and Connor are a pair, uh, Nicole, Locke, and Chris and Steve are like a trio. There's a lot going on. Uh, I'd say the only one on an island is Zondria. <laughs> um, Chandler and Connor meet up with Chris LeCompte. They are considering sticking with Waka. But Chandler has kind of built trust up with LeCompte throughout the swap here and there. Uh, it's not on the same level that Phil did, but uh, I guess the last vote kind of did something and Chandler wants to work with Chris and he drops Sandri's name as a target. Uh, and Chris pitches a four with him and Steve. Uh, you know, Chris, Steve, Chandler, and Connor could be a, a fun four. Um, We'll talk more about it down the road, but right now we have the challenge, which is Dizzy Bat, another College Survivor classic. You've probably seen it if you've watched all co College Survivor seasons, where it's you spin around on a bat, uh, get really dizzy, and then have to do like a little obstacle course thing. Uh, Phil ultimately wins immunity. Chris Thomas and Ryan discuss LeCompte, Steve, and Locke as targets. Senti mentions to Steve that she wants out Connor. Chandler, Connor, and LeCompte talk about doing uh, Locke or Zondria as targets. They also discuss booting Chris Thomas. Chris Thomas knows that Chris and Steve have dropped his name, and he's also nervous about Ryan and Siona a little bit. And Phil pitches that everyone should just vote out Zondria to Chris Thomas. So a lot of names being thrown out. Uh, we've got a pretty big merge. There are a lot of players here, uh, 11, I believe. So a lot of names being dropped, a lot of different alliances, different duos, different moving parts. And Tribal Council is not the most crazy, but I do think the vote's a little interesting. LeCompte, Steve, Locke, Connor, Senti, Phil, and Chandler vote for Zondria. Ryan, Siona, Chris Thomas, and Zondria vote for Nicole Locke. And uh, <laughs> most notably, one of Chris or Steve, I believe it was Steve, wrote Exandria, like EGG, uh, you know, just shouting out her previous challenge performance, which I love, but it's interesting, despite different groups and many different names being run out, uh, a kind of like cluster of people come together to take out the one person that really has no ties in Zandria. I love it. I think it's uh, a perfect merge boot for me where... You know, it keeps, it takes someone out who's not doing nearly as much as everyone else, and all of the interesting dynamics are still at play. Someone has to turn on somebody, someone's getting backstabbed next round, it's super cool. I absolutely love it. Uh, and the glee in Austin's face showing this vote also makes me very happy. Uh, LeCompte, he wants final three with Locke and Steve. 
but he does want Final Five with Chandler and Connor, so he is genuinely loyal to them at this point. Chandler and Connor, they play dumb with Ryan and Phil about what they were doing. Uh, Chris Thomas and Nicole Sensi have stopped talking slash, slash showmancing the, uh, I, I think it was the 80s or 90s, 90s, I'll say 90s, themed birthday party she had. Uh, she talks a little bit about how, like, he was weird with her at the party, about, like, talking to her and not talking to her, and Chris Thomas, that, there's, like, little splices of, basically the short version is they seem to be on different pages and have, uh, ceased the blossom the romance i won't get too into it because you know not super important but just to follow up to that little storyline that was kind of in the season earlier on ryan and siona are after lecomte and steve uh, at least they were and they were pro phil but it's starting to change phil kind of sketches them out uh, we do have a gross food eating challenge, which I, I think they're cool in all versions of Survivor, but I always have a hard time watching them. The uh, one thing that sticks out here, well, I guess two things. First of all, Siona crushes it, seems to have basically no trouble eating gross food, uh, and Connor gets second place, and after losing, still finishes his food, which is like, alright, bro. I respect that. <laughs> but Siona wins. She also she talks about like I'm being underestimated, and I agree. She definitely is. LeCompte tells Chandler and Connor about Phil's idol, and he wants to go after Chris Thomas while flushing the idol. So the plan is, let's flush Phil's idol, but you know, vote out his closest ally. Chris talks to Connor and wants to flip the vote with Phil, Connor, and Chandler, while the rest of the. Uh, players are split which uh, another thing that's great about so many different duos trios pairs individual players uh is that a vote getting split is not the craziest thing in the world i think it's uh something that could be reliable if with how many people are kind of in the middle of different factions here but at tribal chris thomas is nervous about phil being targeted he thinks it means that he's really the target, because people probably know Phil the idol, right? Uh, and Chris, Thomas, the comp, Steve, Locke, and Phil, they meet up before Tribal and talk about maybe, you know, let's go to Ryan, let's go to Ryan and Siona. Uh, at Tribal, they talk about all of the unbreakable pairs at the booth. Steve goes, we meet again, camera, with a lot of emphasis on the camera. This is something, I can't remember if he had done it before to this point, um, but it's something he basically does the rest of the season, uh, and I love it. <laughs> you gotta, gotta gas up the camera. The votes. We have two for Ryan. Three for Phil. And the rest are for Chris Thomas. Chris Thomas finally gets taken out. He dodged so many bullets on this season in the pre-merge, but, um... Those middle boys, uh, Chandler and Connor, uh, ultimately turn on him. Go with Steve, Locke, and Chris. And Chris Thomas is taken out. Next up, we have Phil and Siona mourning Chris Thomas. Uh, it's like Phil talks about how Chris was his boy. Siona talks about not liking him at first, but he really grew on him and he's a good person. Which, uh, there's a lot of that... Uh, a lot of that chatter around Chris this season, a lot of people talk about that with Siona as well in terms of like, she's someone that, oh, I didn't like Siona at first, but she really grew on me. Uh, a lot of these people grow on each other and it's nice. Um, but they're mourning CT in their confessionals and then Sensi has <laughs> a confessional saying that at the point that he got voted out, uh, they hadn't really patched things up. They were still kind of like oh, in weird territory. Uh, and says she would have loved to write his name down, which I just think is funny. Like, like sh she's clearly cool with him at the point of doing the conventional, but it's like, I wasn't then and I would have voted him out, and I just think that's very funny. Um, onward. Chris LeCompte really trying to solidify the four with Steve Chandler and Connor. We have a reel of everyone talking about how Phil has an idol and is a target, and he didn't play his idol. Chris and Steve try to mend things with Phil, who seems open, but doesn't want to seem like he's fully on board. We then have the touchy subjects community where everyone, you know, you have to vote with the majority about different things. And uh, Steve wins immunity. Siona got a decent amount of bad 
superlatives, but takes it like a champ. She, you know, brushes it off. Very, very confident person, that Siona. I respect her. Uh, and uh, a nice little exchange. I won't go through every superlatives because unless they play a bigger role in the season, I don't think it's worth it. I, I do have them more and down, but what do you, you know? It's always a fun challenge to watch. Go watch it. Uh, Connor, <laughs> this is a quote uh, of, I think it's like one of the, the a group of the boys meeting up. Connor won Dark Horse, so now he's not a Dark Horse. And someone else goes, Nicole won Prettiest, so now she's not the prettiest. <laughs> Which is like, all right. <laughs> guys are so weird. Uh, Phil tells Ryan, we have a common enemy. And that common enemy is Crystal Compt. Connor Chandler is... LeCompte top, and they want to split on Phil and Siona. Ryan and Phil pitch voting LeCompte to Chandler. Phil tells Chandler, I need you. And we can go any which way in this game. Chandler and Connor consider throwing their votes, uh, like just kind of throwing them on a rando and letting Chris LeCompte get taken out by like Ryan, Siona, and Phil. Um, at Tribal Council, they talk about the challenge being funny, but LeCompte gets real serious with it. He's like, Chandler and LeConnor, I almost said LeConnor, <laughs> LeChandler and LeConnor are not being honest with him. There's weird stuff going on here. And then the vote is split. It's a four to three to two. But who's getting voted out? Get two votes on Phil. Three votes on Siona. So is Chris LeConnor being voted out? What's going on? Four votes on Nicole Locke, who goes home. These fools have a four to three to two split. They don't get Chris out. They get out Nicole Locke. Very interesting. Nicole Locke, who seemed to be the right hand person to Chris and Steve here and there, uh, had working relationships with Phil, but not fully trusted by a lot of the Waka members. Her name got brought up um, in the first to merge round episode. But uh, her getting taken out over Chris is kind of a surprise. Phil and Chris not playing their idols is wild too. Um, but yeah, Chandler and Connor, uh, they I think they were the votes on Siona. <clears throat> or no, I think they were votes. On, it it does, ultimately doesn't matter. But uh, the Colac goes home here in a split, and it's wild. These these boys are playing dangerously in the middle. Speaking of playing in the middle. Uh, we have Phil doing a confession about he trusts Ryan Siona now, and they voted out Nicole Locke with Senti. Uh, Senti has a confession about trusting Ryan and Chandler the most, then Steve, uh, someone she knew before the season, uh, and is talked to here and there now, uh, talks about wanting to do whatever is in her best interest. She will join in a plan with whoever if it lines up with what she wants. This is very important. Uh, the challenge involves running around and memorizing things. Steve ultimately wins it, but then later after reviewing the footage, he didn't actually win. There's like, he like changed something later on in the challenge and they have to do a new challenge. But before the new challenge, they all go camping. <laughs> How nice. Uh, they have a fun little camp out. They roast marshmallows and they sing. Chandler's got his guitar. Um, Siona sparks a fire because Phil blew out their first fire on accident. Chandler and Steve both have confessions about how funny Ryan is, and we have like Ryan telling a funny story. It's just very nice bonding. Like that, there's a lot of like tension in this game here and there, but it, like a nice little campout session is very wholesome, and I appreciate that. Um, the new challenge has everyone on a grid, and they have to move one spot every turn and have to block everyone else for moving. Um, cool challenge. Phil ultimately wins the immunity, so now Steve, who was safe, is now vulnerable. Ryan, he pitches a 3-3 split on Chris and Steve. Let's keep it simple. LeComp and Steve, they pitch voting out Siona to Chandler. Things get interesting here. Siona, Ryan, Phil, and Chandler, and Connor are all in a room. Siona tells Chandler and Connor she's disappointed. She got voted least likable and most annoying, and they want to vote her out. They want to go with Chris and Steve. She gets into people like Chris and Steve, they get everything they want in life. They get all the girls they want, they do well in school, athletics, all this stuff. People like Chris and Steve are successful. And how many times are people like them going to get what they want? It says, we are the underdogs. Phil, Phil has a flip phone. This man has a flip phone. 
Lecompte is considered attractive by most people. I do find Steve attractive, I'm not gonna lie. Is that quote important? No, but it's funny. It says, with Senti, we can split 3-3. Three, three. You don't have to go with them and give them what they want, like they always get. We can split 3-3 three, three and get one of them out. And these, these boys, they literally clap for her. They are riveted by this speech. I probably didn't do it justice. Like, if you take anything away from Survivor Mail and Outback, it is that you need to watch this episode. It should be studied at a museum, and it's still not over. Siona potentially has flipped things here. And here's the... I couldn't fit a, a big enough picture in, so I literally gave it its own slide because it is, it is that iconic. This is Siona. She's like, really get into it. They, they, do you see the joy on these boys' faces? They are feeling this speech. Phil, Chandler, and Connor, after this, talk separately. The speech got to them. They're, they're feeling it. Like, Siona's right, and they know it. Steve has a confessional about how he would be upset if Senti voted against him. Chandler tells Senti about the speech. Remember, she was not there. Remember what she said at the beginning of this episode. Uh, she, he tells her about the split plan, which I wrote fan. Uh, everyone seems on board. All of these old Walker members plus Connor are ready to split. Lecompte tries knocking on Chandler and Connor's door. They do not answer. It is tense. Tribal council starts. Connor, sweet old Connor, is just, he's like, the camping trip was nice, friendship. And then we go to Lecompte, who says, just before tribal, he got a call that his dog died, that he's playing his idol on himself. Very quick heel turn. We get some chatter about Chandler and Connor playing the game, like they're in the middle, they know what they're doing. Siona so says Steve and Chris should have paired up with her and Ryan, and I believe Chris goes, no, he shouldn't have. <laughs> and then it's time to vote. So we had this speech. How many times are people like Chris and Steve going to get what they want? How many times is this going to happen? And we get to the vote. We have Steve going, hello, camera. We meet again, maybe for the last time. It's more like, hello, camera. But it's not important. When the votes are in. Chris plays his idol. Not for himself, but he plays it for Steve. That's interesting. We get three votes for Steve that do not count. Two votes on Connor. That seems weird. Are Chris and Steve voting Connor? Like, Alright, but I don't know. Two votes spread for LeCompte, which means there's one vote left. We have a three to two to two split right now. The three votes on Steve, and none of them count. one vote left who gets that one vote is it Chris is it Connor it's Connor Connor gets voted out in a 3-3-2 split Chris plays his idol correctly on Steve they got Senti to flip it's madness it's so many moving parts in this episode it's the most insane read of Chris to to understand like they're gonna split on Steve this way I need to play my idol on him we can get senti i am i was mind blown the first time i watched it watching it still this is like the third time i've watched this season i'm still like oh my god how did he pull that off ryan goes that literally defied my mind he's like not mad he gives chris props at tribal it's insane it's insane also spoiler for the next slide Chris's dog did not die. That was just a compulsive lie. So Siona flips these boys that were with Chris and Steve. Um, they'd maybe consider throwing their votes, but uh, they're uh, solidly against Chris and Steve. Siona won them over. Siona flipped the 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 game. But these boys flipped Senti. <laughs> Senti, who says, I will vote with whatever helps me the most. These folks that play in the middle are going crazy. This vote is insane. It is the all-time classic Survivor Maryland blind set for me. It's still the one that I'm, I look back and I'm like, I understand why I am obsessed with this. <laughs> and there are, there are a lot of great blindsides and moments in all of College Survivor, a lot of great moments in future Survivor Maryland seasons, still great moments to come from this season. But this is the blind side. This, in my mind, is the most classic college survivor blind side. And I will probably talk more about it on its own at some point. It is that interesting. 
I love it. Moving on. We still have a few episodes left to go. <laughs> I forgot I titled it that. Uh, LeCompte met with Senti before Tribal, and she, he at first pitched voting Ryan, but she's like, no. Then pitched Connor, and she's like, all right. <laughs> she, has, she doesn't really have a relationship with Connor, so she, she's down. Ryan tries in his confessional to talk through the plan and like talk about how good it was and he like goes through the moving parts but he gets confused because it's that crazy uh chris says no my dog didn't actually die that was a very good false of lie i don't know where that came from he admit sent the ass him, and he's just like no nah. <laughs> wild uh senti lies to old waka she tells them that she was throwing her vote and all of them seem to believe it except siona uh steve and lecomte to say we want final three with nicole senti the challenge is treading water, which Steve Sleesman wins. Um, Siona at this point complains about the challenges being like uh, skewed towards the men. I think in general that is valid when it comes to Survivor, and I think a lot of college Survivor that's still true. I don't, I don't know about, I don't know how like valid that is with swimming, but she has a point. Moving on. Chandler, Chris, and Steve talk. Chandler says that Siona got them to flip. They all say it's just a game. They're all chill. The comp throws Phil under the bus, though, and says he leaked some info. And Chandler is like, I never trusted that Phil. <laughs> Ryan and Siona are worried about being easy targets. Senti admits to Chandler that she bittered out Connor on purpose. Uh, and he's like, ah. Oh. They talk about not trusting Phil, though. And what if we run out Phil? Because if we vote for Phil and he plays his idol, the comp goes, and that's fine too. We're still in the middle. Uh, Steve tells Ryan that they're voting for Siona, which he does not believe. And then we go to Tribal Council. We have a lot of whispering. Siona says she effed everything over and that the plan kept flipping. Siona says that Chandler calls her mom and how do you vote out your own mother? Which is a valid question. Looking at you, actual Survivor players, moving on. We get a four to two to one vote. That's interesting. Phil voted for Siona and says at the booth, LeCompte gave me his word. Ryan and Siona vote for LeCompte. Stiff, stiff. Steve, Chris, Chandler, and Cincy vote out Phil, but Phil has an idol. So if Phil plays his idol, Chris LeCompte goes home. But Phil does not play his idol. Phil goes home. This man. Phil, I, I give him a lot of credit. He is not like the most active social player. He left Sendy and Chandler in the dark of the swap, but worked towards helping them. Um, but he's, he was able to get a lot done throughout the season. And one thing I'll, I'll, have, I'll give him credit for throughout the entire merge up until this point is that everyone knew he had the idol. And I think he knew that they knew. And still was like gutsy enough to not play it and he needed to play this time and he didn't um but phil a big player in this game someone everyone respected as a player someone that people were always wary of they finally get him out he does not play his idol the season keeps on giving and siona even he gets voted out and siona's like the fact that phil got voted out and i didn't that is such bullshit <laughs> which is just funny Episode 13, Siona has everyone give Phil a round of applause, which is very nice. Uh, Chandler says despite burning Chris before, hopefully swapping back could get him his vote. Siona talks about feminism and equal rights and wanting a woman in the finals, which is all very cool. Senti and Chandler talk about truly being in the middle. Siona floats the idea of pairing up with Chris and Steve to Chris and Steve and pitches Chandler as a target, which Chris and Steve seem on board with. I spelled the board wrong, what you, I forgot that out, but it's okay. Ryan has confessions about how Chris and Steve want control back and how they have hypnotized Senti, which I think is not giving Senti enough credit. Uh, oh well, it, ha it happens in Survivor sometimes. You just kind of assume, oh, they did this because of them. I, I don't think that's fair, but oh well. The challenge is trivia and then shooting raspberries on uh, a target, I think with their name or picture. Uh, LeCompte wins. Ryan has a confession about Chris bloodying his hands 
more than Steve and that Steve could get more jury votes. Santi has a confession about trusting everyone left in the game except Siona. Siona pitches Chandler to Steve again and also says she would vote off Ryan down the line. I don't know about that. Uh, Chandler is unsure of what side to go with. Ryan doesn't trust the Chandler move and thinks that Chris could use this against them if they go along with it. Ryan wants Steve out. Sienna wants Chandler out. Ryan is frustrated that Santi and Chandler don't seem to want Steve out. Chandler confronts Ryan and Sienna about pitching him. LeCompte pushes Santi, uh, well, is pushing Santi that Ryan and Sienna want her and Chandler out. Sienna says she doesn't want Santi at final three and says that she hasn't played that hard and didn't put herself in her position. It says that she was put in her position. I don't think that's fair. I think there's a little bit of both, uh, you know. Cynthia is not the most active player, but she actively makes the move that benefits her the most. That's kind of my interpretation of it. Um, time for tribal. LeCompte says he's glad he won immunity or else Ryan Sienna would be voting for him. Uh, one of them says Senti's got no one's allegiance. Senti says that she's made too many promises to too many people. Comp says if you want to stay in the game, there's a revote. Consider flipping. Okay, okay. Now I labeled this one shoot your shot icon. Now why is that? Well, when Siona writes Steve's name down on the parchment, she also writes Trina and then a phone number. <laughs> Hey man, I respect you. Go for it. Uh, the votes are 3-3 three, three against Steven and Siona. We are tied. Now I'm going to re vote. We have Siona, then Steve. Siona, then Siona. And then Siona's voted out. Senti stuck with Chris and Steve. Chandler was with Ryan and Siona, but flipped. And we have Siona. The queen of speeches and empowerment going out at final six. Chandler, he has a confessional about uh, having to flip his vote. He says he knew Senti wasn't going to backstab Steve, so he had to backstab Ryan and Sienna. Senti has a confessional about how part of her decision was she heard that uh, she and Chandler did not deserve to go farther. Um, and that part of it is leaving Ryan more vulnerable. I think both of those things valid reasons for voting someone out. Chandler and LeCompte talk. Chris wants to vote out Ryan. Chandler is upfront about how it might be better for him to vote off Chris or Steve. And I believe Chris is like, I don't see how. Or like, how's that? It's not that. It's like, how's that going to work? <laughs> Which, uh, I don't know. Chris is a very intense player in this game. Uh, so it sometimes borders on like uncomfortable with how intense he gets like he gets very passionate in a heated way um, But I think it, it it comes from like just a deep competitive edge that this guy has it's kind of crazy um, I respect it though the challenge is staying on a pole of longest classic endurance challenge that I've talked about in I think every other college survivor maybe not Boston, but uh, like Michigan's done this Ohio State's done it. It'll be in Maryland again. <laughs> uh, Chandler and Ryan drop first and walk off together. They are not worried. They think Senti's with them. Part of it is... I don't remember if this is on the next slide or not. Part of it is that they were busy. I think they have stuff going on. And um, they really do think Senti will vote with them. Senti drops, but talks with Chris and Steve. She stays there. And they're like pushing her to stick with them. Um, she at some point says, if one of you drop, I won't vote you out, and Steve drops, and Chris wins immunity. Also, down here in the picture, Ryan says at some point, I feel like it's not worth me, like, twisting my groin muscles, and LeCompte goes, like, uh, what do you need those for, Crowder? <laughs> it's like, man, they all roast each other. Senti has a confessional about feeling pressured to make a decision. Chandler has a confessional about how him and Ryan were busy and that's part of why they left. Also says Ryan was insistent that they have Senti. Ryan has a confessional about how Chris LeCompte's game is high school drama and that watching this, you will see that he had control over this game. Now, I don't think Ryan is a bad player. 
do I think he's had control of this game? No. I think he had control over a lot of the pre-merge. Um, you can give him a fair amount of credit for him and Tiona staying safe. And uh, he was part of many moving parts that flipped different votes. Um, but in the post-merge, like, I think the Nicole Lockboat was the only one he got right, I think. Uh, I can't remember just by talking about it and watching this so many times, but uh, definitely he's a good player. I wouldn't give any one player credit for, like, having control over this game. It's shifted so much. Um, anyways, the final five attend a frat party, and at this frat party, Senti tells Chandler that she's going to vote him out, and he gets the party to chant, vote out Nicole. Um, Steve and Chris go with Nicole to a different party, and Ryan and Chandler follow them. It's it gets weird. They are all drinking <laughs> and are in this high pressure game. It doesn't go well. Ryan is swearing a lot in a confessional about this, that, and the other, and Austin is in this confessional laughing. Uh, <laughs> And it's just, it wouldn't be funny if Austin wasn't there laughing. It would be like, oh, this is too much for me, but I don't know. Seeing someone there laughing at it, I was like, okay. Uh, the next day, Ryan is worried that he put the nail in his coffin. He apologizes to Senti, uh, who says no hard feelings. Senti, the queen of not holding grudges, very mature throughout this whole season, I would say. Ryan thinks it's him going, and Senti says it's not 100%. She doesn't want to vote Steve or Chandler, but does recognize that Steve may have the best shot to win this game. Senti and Chandler talk about how if they boot Steve, they need to win next week, and Chandler says if it's a final two, they can boot Ryan next week. Uh, I think Senti asks about it, which kind of prompts him to say that. Um, and then Senti pitches Steve to Ryan, then leaves to talk with the comp, uh, which kind of frustrates Ryan. He says something along the lines of like, how am I going to convince someone of something when they keep changing their mind? I understand that frustration. It gets messy though. Tribal Council, uh, Ryan says he was betrayed by a close friend and calls Senti the evil of evils. Chandler says Senti is voting Ryan because her and Steve are a thing. And there's a little bit of like Chandler being weird throughout the season. Like I think he asks, he like prods her about the CT stuff earlier on. Uh, for details, which is a little weird, uh, I think. At least, like, it uh, isn't on camera. Like, I, I don't want to judge people's friendships, but I don't care. That seems a little weird. And then him talking about, like, her and Steve hooking up or asking about it, I feel like that's a little weird. Kind of crosses a line. Um, I think at one point she says, like, you guys can't say these things. My mom is going to watch this. And says it, like, in a, like, funny way, but, like, like, I would genuinely be concerned about that. Um, it does get heated. Ryan and Chandler for sure cross the line with their shit talking. They say, like, Steve and Chris, like, emotionally manipulated or, like, took advantage of Senthi being, like, upset at the party and stuff. And the comp gets heated at them. They kind of all go back and forth. I will say, and Austin has said this kind of on a, uh, I think like an all I think it was like an all stars cast casting stream or something. Uh, I was like, these two seem drunk and they're laughing and shit talking, but they seem like they've had a lot to drink. And I believe Austin said that like Ryan was tipsy at this tribal, and I'm like, all right, it's still not cool. Um, knowing Senti though, it's like she's fine after this. It's still a little gross to me. I don't love it. Um, and Austin asks if the vote is strategic personal, and Senti says 100% personal, which leads to... And a 3-2 vote, Ryan is voted out over Steve. Um, I feel like what makes this round okay and not fully, like, uncomfortable for me personally is that Ryan says all these things, it gets a little line crossy to me personally, as a viewer and a soft person. <laughs> but then he gets voted out because of it, and I'm like, okay. Like, there's a direct consequence of his actions and I am on board with that um and you know I know that he apologizes after and they're still friends going into a uh, future all-star season so it's all water under the bridge but watching this back I was like oh this episode's a little tough uh still captivating just not captivating in a fun way that you know the others are but uh yeah Ryan goes out shouldn't be talking shit. <laughs> I 
If he had come to this tribe both sober and was nice, maybe it would be a different story. Which leads us into the finale. Well, before that, uh, the host and creator, Austin, introduces the season, gives thanks for the support. I think he mentions, like, different platforms, like, uh, podcasts or social media or something. Um, should have wrote those down. But, uh, just Austin being appreciative for this, which is wild, because in my mind, uh, coming into Survivor Maryland and College Survivor, it's like, Austin kind of, like, created this community, which is, like, you know, good on him. Uh, anyways, we get a little recap of the players in the season. Senti has a special about how she was planning to vote Steve, but Ryan got mean in Tribal Council, and it's like, valid. Uh, the final four hangs out, and the comforter Steve say to Chandler, Chandler, you should just throw the challenge. <laughs> Don't put this burden on us, which is very funny. Um, the final four challenge, Steve wins immunity. The actual challenge was, um, I think it's called like the best of survivor it's like a different parts of different challenges you have to do them all um steve wins austin says something about like it's a one in three chance for the rest of you and lecomte is like that's debatable and they're like why is that debatable uh and basically steve and chris didn't know that the tie rules at four were different it's not like a rock jar or anything like uh, uh it's like a revel like they thought if one of them won the other would just be safe because they had two votes, um, which is unfortunate. <laughs> I think this, I like him saying this kind of burns him a little. Um, they then tell Cynthia if she doesn't vote out Chandler, they're going to vote for her. She is not happy. That is not how you speak to Nicole Cynthia. They should know better at this point. Uh, Nicole Senti wants to make the vote LeCompte versus Chandler. That way they have to compete in the tiebreaker, not her and LeCompte. Well, <laughs> we have some confessionals and meeting about jury votes and how that'll go. You know, we're right at the end. That's expected. The speculation continues at Tribal, which Chandler and LeCompte kind of bicker about, like, spite votes. LeCompte seems annoyed that he could lose out of spite. Uh, there's more that gets involved. It's not super relevant. Uh, I think Ch Chandler does have a line, I think, at the voting booth of, like, Chris, stop being mean to me. I'm trying to be friends with you, which is just funny. Uh, it's just, this man has put so much in this game. He gets so intense with it. The vote itself, though, it's 2-2 on Chris and Senti. And they have to compete in a memory challenge tiebreaker. And what happens at this tiebreaker? Well, Nicole Senti wins the tiebreaker. And Chris LeCompte is our fourth place Robert Goddess. This man pulled off the most insane move, and Senti and Steve were a part of it, but um, the counter blindside, I think, is one of the greatest things I've ever seen in watching Survivor, Big Brother, The Genius, all these different social strategy games that I love and obsess over. It is one of the most fascinating moves, and he pulled it off against crazy odds. He overcame a lot. He had a lot of control. He had an idol, a pre-game relationship that he really... Him and Steve worked really well together. Um, they did a good job getting Senti on their side here and there. Got Chris... Uh, not Chris. Uh, Chandler and Connor on their side here and there. Like uh, This man put in so much work, and it's tragic to see him go here. Um, I think it's fun that Senti beat them. You kind of wouldn't expect her to beat him in the challenge. She didn't expect to beat him in a challenge. Um, but yeah, Crystal Compt gets fourth place. I, I like that if he had to go out, it's in a, an unexpected way. He doesn't get voted out in a casual way. That's not how someone like Crystal Compt gets taken out of the game. He goes out in a, a big, exciting, tie-breaking challenge. You know, you, you think he's got this game? just falls short and i i was it, it's tragic in a way i i really loved his passion i liked what he was able to accomplish um and it's it's it sucks i still love the final three but chris the man a uh, phenomenal player one of the most fascinating players one of the most intense players um really 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 sad to lose him here but it's exciting it's an exciting way to you know go down the stretch here moving on austin reveals that they have one more challenge and that it's a final two the players didn't know uh which i don't love i kind of like when everyone knows what's going on but 
they didn't know for sure if it was a final two or three, and this kind of prompts Steve to be like, I have to win or I am out. Um, they then have a little rite of passage thing, they talk about all the players, there's some funny stuff here and there, but nothing crazy. And then it's challenge time, which is hand on a hard idol, which in this case is hold on to a metal pole, which is cold, uh, longer than anyone else. You can't let go or you're out. Uh, there's some light-hearted chatter here and there, everyone is concerned about a deal, uh, about making a deal if they drop mostly Senti. <laughs> uh, some embarrassing stories get told, which I will not tell on this recap, uh, slash presentation, slash whatever, but there's some fun stuff in there. Uh, after an hour and a half, they're all still there. Chandler mentions that he isn't playing to win the game, but he wants to win. He says Steve wants it more. Uh, he doesn't want to drop because he thinks he'll just get taken out if he does. Since he drops, I think close to two hours, maybe after two hours, to go finish a paper. And then after three hours and 41 minutes, and when him and Steve are on there, they bond a lot. It's very nice. Chandler talks about his life. But close to four hours, Chandler drops, making Steve Sleesman the final immunity winner. Steve and Chandler talk. Steve says to convince me that you will lose to me and I will take you. But Chandler's pitching is awkward. He It's funny, but he like tries to flirt. He's like taking off his shirt, doing weird stuff. He like tries to talk about what he should do and he's like, you know, I don't think you should vote out Chris. And Sue's like, okay, I won't vote out Chris. And it's like, Chris is gone, dude. Like, what are you doing? Chandler's just gets goofy with it. Cindy's pitch is more about, like, loyalty. They've stuck together. They've worked together. There's a little bit of awkwardness of Steve talking about, like, uh, getting a smooch if he asks for it. And she's like, please do not do that. And Steve doesn't. <laughs> but it's weird that it got brought up. Moving on. Uh, at Tribal... Senti says she thinks the jury doesn't think that she deserves to win. Chandler says that Senti has had more impact and that he is bad at pitching. But ultimately, Steve casts his vote against Chandler, who gets third place. Only he flirted a little bit better. Uh, Chandler is a player. I think Chandler, he kind of said it himself. He wasn't playing to win. He uh, definitely wanted it less than some others, but I do think he was a good player. Socially, he got along well with a lot of people in this game. Um, was in multiple alliances. He was in the middle a lot of the time, um, actively pitching and shifting things, throwing his vote at times to try and hide his allegiance, which didn't always work. Um, but uh, yeah, I liked Chandler. I thought he was kind of a neat player. Am I fine that he goes here, though? Yeah, I like Steven Senti as his final two, but um, definitely someone that played hard. Seemed to have a good time. I didn't like how he got at the final five round, but, it, it, you know. That aside, seemed to be a nice guy. Everyone got along with Chandler. Was a decent play. Moving on. There are some cheery confessionals about making it to the end. Uh, Steve and Senti kind of go through their path, their journeys. Final Trouble Council, it's mostly straightforward questions like, why do you think you deserve to win? Why do you think they don't? What did you do better? Like, most of that, don't feel like it's necessary to get into it super heavy. Um, I will talk about their pitches, though. Um, Senti's opening statement, she goes into flying under the radar, making strong alliances, and getting in the middle. Steve talks, uh, he does the outwit, outplay, at last kind of spiel. Uh, outwitted them by teaming up with Chris, who got more heat, uh, was good at challenges, which is outplay, and then outlasted by getting to the end. Uh, a lot of questions, basic finale questions. Uh, CT gives Steve props and is really rude to Senti. He says like she got there by hooking up with half the guys, which is really, really unnecessary. Uh, everyone is like pissed at him when he says this, which is nice. It's good that they had her back and was like, Chris is an idiot. Uh, there is a reason for it that we'll see in the next slide, it's weird. Uh, Connor is very nice and talks about making friends. Felt like I needed to put that in there after having to put in Chris Thomas' since it was one of the more memorable things. Um, Siona asks them if they're the Katniss and Peeta of Survivor, which I thought was funny. And also says, Senti played one of the best games and everyone is bitter. I was a little surprised by that, especially after a few rounds ago when Siona went saying that you know, Senti was in the spot, but she didn't put herself there, and seems to have flipped that. Uh, 
mindset. I don't know if that's her reflecting or talking with the other voted out players. Um, or just having a change of heart on her own. I like it though. Uh, I think Cynthia is a great player as well. But moving on. Those are the main things. There are a few other questions. Uh, Zondri asks Steve about voting her out. Uh, someone asks Senti if she played the best, like the perfect second place game, and she says no, which, good. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's mostly basic final shot, but nothing super crazy outside of this stuff, or nothing super memorable outside of this stuff. The finale. Zandria votes for Nicole Senti, and at the booth says she doesn't want it to be 9 0 Steve. That's interesting. Compt votes Steve. Makes sense. Ryan gives Sensi props at the booth and votes for her. Gives her some well-earned respect. Connor votes for Steve and says he's a nice guy. Nicole Ox votes Steve. You kind of expect that. Chris Thomas votes Nicole Sensi and says he loves Steve. Steve's his boy, but he wants Nicole to win despite bashing her. We, I don't think he says this here, and it's a very mild spoiler for uh, the eventual All-Star season that I'm excited to talk about. Um, but... I guess part of his reasoning was he was rude, like, uh, he was trying to gain sympathy for Cynthia, is at least what he says in the future. Considering he does vote for her, and had also allegedly convinced, this is also, like, Maryland All-Star spoiler, convinced Zandria to, like, hey, let's vote for Cynthia, so it's not a, she doesn't get no votes. Um, I kind of believe that. That seems to add up, uh... Otherwise, Zandri's vote for Senti doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And, um, why would he say that and then vote for her if he didn't, if it wasn't on purpose? So, I don't know. But, uh, yeah. It, it's odd. But, uh, fascinating. Moving on. The votes get read two weeks later. That's why we have them in a different building. Well, Senti's wearing a lovely Christmas sweater. It's the best thing about Christmas are the sweaters, I gotta say. Very excited to bust some of those out in a couple months. Votes are two weeks later. First, Steve, Nicole, Steve, Steve, Nicole, Nicole. 3-3, three, three, pretty even so far. And there are nine total. Steve, Nicole, so it's 4-4. Four, four. One vote left for the winner. Very, very, very split. I love it. I think both would be good winners. Steve Sleesman wins. That last vote goes to Steve. Uh, Ryan, Siona, Zandria, and Chris Thomas vote for Nicole Senti. Uh, Connor, Chandler, Phil, uh, Chris, and Nicole Lock vote for Steve. He wins the season. Some closing thoughts. So, Steve wins the game. Uh, I think Steve is a pretty solid winner, well liked. Uh, he came into the merge as a kind of a target for being tight with Chris, and um, was targeted at the swap. He tried to make a move and was ultimately down in the numbers when Connor flipped. Kind of a flaw in that he didn't have old Nahami solid, but he, it, most of his people were on the other tribe. It's like, okay, big cast, I get it. it it's still a knock against him, but not a huge one. Um, him and Chris get Connor and Chandler on their side. He does a lot of work to get keep Senti on his side throughout the season. Um, and with Chris, I mean, they're a well old machine, those two. They pulled off some, some crazy stuff, and um, they and other players talk about, like, Chris got his hands dirty while well, Steve got off clean. I still don't know how they would have done against each other. Steve had confessionals here and there about, like, maybe he can't take Chris to the end. Down the end, it definitely flipped, and he was like, I have to take Chris to the end. Um, I think no matter who Steve got there with, it'd be a close vote, but... Uh, he's good at challenges, well-liked, made smart moves here and there, pulled off some stuff with Chris and Senti, um, and yeah, even the people that weren't with Steve seemed to like him. Uh, very nice, uh, while, like, you know, Chandler had some beef with Chris down the line, didn't have that with Steve, you know, Steve's, uh, a little, a little warmer, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think very solid winner. Is he the flashiest winner? I, you know, I mean, I think Chris Compton would have been the flashiest winner, but that's a, you know, things happen. Uh, Steve pulling that out still pretty well earned, I would say. 
Uh, Nicole Sentia's owner would have been cool too. I think there's... And, and I've gone back and forth on like, she put herself in the middle spot or was put there. I think it's a bit of both, to be honest. I feel like she wasn't someone who actively made votes happen, but when a, a vote, when a name came up that she's like, this is the best route for me, she would take that. I don't think that's someone convincing her to do something. I think that's her seeing a path that benefits her more than another one and taking it. So I think it's kind of in between. Um, when I first watched the season, I was like, I, I don't understand how there's a debate. Like, Senti was clearly put in that spot, but I, I don't think that's true. She, she, you know, the Connor vote, she didn't have a relationship with Connor, and she did have one with Chris and Steve, so why not vote Connor? That helps her. At the final six, she goes against Siona because she is good with everyone else except Siona. I think that makes sense. Um, in terms of her as a player, I mean, she got four out of five jury votes. It wasn't a blowout at all. Like, Ryan and Siona respected her game. Chris Thomas <laughs> either respected her game or liked her enough to vote for her, even though he likes Steve. Got Zandri to vote for her, allegedly. I think she's a very solid player. A uh, very good middle player. Not the most active, um, but naturally skilled player, I'd say. And, uh, I don't know. I think there's a lot of merit in a game with, especially with a big cast, someone that can see all the options on the table and be like, this one's best for me. I'm going to do this despite how I feel. That certainly changed. Like, she votes out Ryan because of how he is to her, but, uh, I don't know. I see the merit in that, too. It's like, if she goes with them because they're like, it'd be dumb if you don't put out Steve, or like, like they just bash her, you know, Ryan and Chandler, and it's like, does she look much better if she goes with them after that? Like, I don't think so, so worth bringing that up. But, um, so that's the final two. The season is, the, the post-merge as a whole, I mean, I, I love it. The Zandria merge boot is wild. It's just like the one person that has no ties somehow gets taken out, keeps all these fun dynamics in the game. Then it's Chris Thomas while trying to flush those idol, which they don't. Then it, it flips back on Nicole Locke with Connor and Chandler just kind of tossing their votes and letting her get taken out. Uh, the how many times that, that whole episode, that speech, Chris LeCompte's dog lie and flipping Senti, um, it's just so good. Phil getting taken out, uh, trusting LeCompte and him voting, I think, Siona, <laughs> I think, uh, and not playing his idol, like, that's wild. Siona going after a tie vote, uh, Chandler flipping there, like, that's, that's pretty crazy. Ryan just blowing up his game by being mean. <laughs> And drinking too much. Uh, definitely part of the college element coming into play. Uh, Chris LeCompte going out in tiebreaker. Um, Steve winning, taking Nicole Senti. Winning a very, very close vote. Very exciting. I love this post-merge. The whole season is very exciting. Episode to episode, I don't think there's a single dud, really. Um, a lot of the less active players went out early. I think the only one that the only player that was like really active that went out early was Holly, and that was exciting enough that I was like, all right, I'm here for it still. Um, but yeah, just a really fun and exciting season. I loved how just the, the element of these people, everyone can talk to everyone really comes to play despite there being tribes. The, I, I just, I love this season so much. It's so fun and exciting. And um, yeah. Even without the Connor blindside, I would still be like, this was a great season. Uh, never bored. Some of the episodes are more short and straight to the point. I don't mind that. I feel like none of my time is wasted. <laughs> there, there are seasons of regular Survivor where it's like, you know what's going to happen, and they kind of draw it out with fake plans. I feel like here you get everyone's dynamics. You get a lot of people's thoughts. Um some more than others and it's like the people that seem to be less invested fortunately went out early and there wasn't too much you know i don't know not not much seemed to be left up in the air i guess i actually don't know what i'm saying i'm getting tired <laughs> we're elegance, but uh this season is great i absolutely love it it is the start of a uh 
series of great seasons too. Season one, I don't remember if I talked about this in the premiere, but uh, wasn't a finished product, which is why I'm glossing over it. I will talk a little bit about it in a like pre All Stars uh, presentation or just the pre-merge of All Stars. I'll get into it, but um. This is the first full season of College Survivor, and I think it's a hit. I love it from start to finish. Absolutely riveting. And, uh, yeah. I love it. Had a really good time talking about it. I hope this, uh, slight shift in how I did this is a little better, a bit more focused on, like, my actual enjoyment instead of just recapping. There's still a lot of that, but I feel like, I, I don't know, I enjoyed doing this. And, uh, hope it was a fun watch. Go watch the full season. Is absolutely worth your time. Thank you.